9.1 intersections of lines in R2 and R3. So this is part two of 9.1. In the first section, we did lines with planes. So the start of this one is basic stuff that you did back in grade nine. We're talking about lines in R2. So let's say these pens are my lines. They can be parallel. There can be one point of intersection. Pretend these are flat onto the paper. Or they could be exactly the same or on top of each other, the coincident lines. So let's take a quick look at these and then we'll move on to the three space ones, which are considerably more interesting. So if I gave you these two lines, now I've said what they are here on the side. These are parallel lines. Now, how would you prove that they are parallel? Well, if you were back in grade nine, you would probably write these into y equals mx plus b format. So let's do that because Obviously, that's going to be what pops into your head first, and it's also the easiest thing to do. So I brought the 3y over, I brought the 2x um, to the this side and the 7 over there and switch them all around, but I'm sure you understand what I've done there. So that means y is going to be 2 thirds x minus 7 thirds. So if they are parallel, obviously these have to have the same slope, which is your m value. So if I do this one, I'd say, well, 12y is equal to 8x minus 15. And that, again, would give me y equals 2 thirds x, 8 over 12, right? And then I have minus 15 over 12, which is 5 over 4. So I divide by 3, and you can see that these are different y-intercepts, same slope. Therefore, the lines are parallel. That would be the easiest way to do it. With the second equation here, though, we have the, the lines in vector format. So in order for me to see how they intersect, I want to state the parametric equations first. So I'm going to say, well, that's just um, x is equal to, and I would do 2 minus t, and y is going to be equal to minus 3 plus 4t. And for my other line here, I would have x is equal to 9 plus 3s, and y is equal to minus 1 minus 2s. So there's my parametric equations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the x values equal to each other and the y values equal to each other. And I'm going to get two equations with two unknowns. And of course, you would know how to solve that because we did that back in grade nine. So I'm going to say, oh no, it was actually grade 10, sorry. So I'm two minus t equals nine plus three s. And then if I rearrange that equation, I would get, let's move things around here. So I'd have three s, I'm gonna bring the t over plus t is equal to minus seven. Okay, so there's one. Now the second one, I'm going to do the y, so I'm going to say minus three plus four t is equal to minus one minus two s. So rearranging that and trying to keep them in the same order here, I'd have two s, so bring that over there. I leave the four t where it was, and I'm going to bring the minus three over here and add that that's going to give me two. Okay, so now I wanna solve for S and T. So I'm gonna number these equations one and two, and I'm going to do equation one times two, so I'll eliminate the S's. So I'm gonna make six S, so six S plus two T equals minus 14. I'm gonna multiply this one by three, equation two times three. Always good to state what you're doing, especially if you go back to check your work. Um, so times three, that's 12t equals six, and I'm going to subtract to eliminate, same sign, subtract. So two minus 12 is minus 10t, and minus 14 minus six is minus 20. So that means t is going to be equal to two. So if t is two, I'm going to put a little box around that. What's s equal to? Well, I can use any one of these equations, whatever one you like. Let's pick, um, let's pick this one just for fun. 
So 2s plus 4 times 2 is equal to 2. So 2s is equal to 8. So 2 minus 8 is minus 6. So s is going to be minus 3. You can pick whichever combination you want. So now I know that s is minus 3 and t is 2. And I can find the point of intersection by plugging it into either one of these equations. So when t equals 2, I would get x is equal to, so put in 2 here, so it gives 0. And I put y, I put 2 in here, so minus 3 plus 8 is going to be 5. Now you could have done the same, and I'll show you that it's still quite legitimate to use the other one. So if I said, how about when s is equal to minus 3, am I going to get the same answer? So if I put in minus 3 here, I would get x equals 0. 9 minus 9. And if I put s is minus 3, minus 1 plus 6 is 5. So therefore, 0, 5 is the point of intersection. Just like that. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So this says, oh, these are coincident lines. Don't say, oh yeah, that's the answer. You have to show, prove that they are coincident. So the first thing you want to check anytime you're doing any of these questions with lines is the direction vectors. So if I look at this direction vector and this one here, I can see that this one is minus three times this one. So that means they're parallel lines, but are they coincident? How are you going to check if they're coincident? Well, what you want to do is you want to check to see if this point is on this line or is this point on this line. Your choice. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to check if this point, so I'm going to say, is minus 113 on the first line, we'll call it. Okay, so how do I do that? I set up the parametric equations. So I say x is equal to 4 minus t, and y is equal to 3 plus 2t. So if this point is on this line, then the t values will be the same when I plug in x is minus 1 and y is 13. So let's do that. Minus 1 equals 4 minus t. I bring the 4 over. I get um, minus 4. It's minus 5 is minus t. So t is equal to 5. Okay, now how about, um, let me just write that here, when x is equal to minus 1, when y is equal to 13, just so you know where I'm getting these numbers from. So now I plug in 13 for y, so I get 13 is 3 plus 2t, 10 is equal to 2t, and lo and behold, t equals 5. So that means this point is on this line. You could check the other way around as well, find out that this point is on this line, but showing one is on one line is sufficient. So therefore, the lines are coincident. Coincident lines, same thing. Okay, so that's your two space lines. Let's take a look at something in three space now. So let's first talk about the types of intersections you can have in three space. So here we are, we can lift it off the paper now because we're in three space. So we have parallel, parallel and distinct lines. Look, they're parallel. No matter which way I turn them, they're never going to intersect. They can still be in three space and intersect in one place. That happens. <laughs> that happens. Or they could be coincident. Oh yes, they're right on top of each other. Coincident lines. Nice and close. Not safe distance apart. And finally, the skew lines. Something new. When I'm in three space, look, I could go keep this line. It's, it's hard to do this. You should try it. It's like rubbing your belly and tapping your head. Here's some skew lines. Here's some other skew lines. Look, these ones will never intersect. They have their own space. They're a certain distance apart and they will not cross. Skew, a new word for you. Not parallel and not intersecting. Okay, so how are we going to check to see if something is skew or parallel or whatever? So the first thing, the method is going to be as follows. You're going to check the direction vectors to see if they are parallel. First thing you want to do, 
or you're making you're going to make all kinds of work for yourself that you don't really want to have to do for nothing. If they're parallel, check to see if they're coincident. Just like in the last question, if they're coincident, then one point will have to be on the other line. So you would set up your parametric equations and plug in the value of the other point and see if you get the same S and T's. If they're not parallel, they are either skew or have one point of intersection. Okay, so let's do an example of each of those so you can see what we're talking about. Okay, so method one, check the direction vectors. Okay, here, I look at them here. Oh, they look pretty similar, don't they? This one is a minus two times this equation. So these are telling me right away that the lines are parallel. So if they're parallel, they could be parallel indistinct or they could be coincident, right? That means the same thing. So I'm going to check to see if this point here is on this line here. Is this on this line? So what I want to do is write out the parametric equations for line one here. Let's call this L1, L2. So for L1, I get X equals three plus T. And I get Y is equal to minus two plus four T and Z is going to be five minus two T. Okay, so if this point is on this line and I plug in 10 for X, 26 for Y, and 7 for Z, my T's must be all the same. Or else they're not, it's not, you can't put this point on this line. Okay, so let's try it. So 10 is equal to 3 plus T. So I'm just going to go this way just so I don't, uh, so whatever. T equals 7, right? T equals 7. Now let's try the next point. Y, so I have 26 equals minus 2 plus 4t. So that means that 28 equals 4t and t is equal to 7. So far so good. Now I'm going to say 7 is equal to 5 minus 2t. And you can probably see right away this isn't going to work because that's going to be 2 is minus 2t so t is going to be minus 1. Bam. Therefore, not on the line. And the lines are parallel and distinct. Okay, so it, it didn't fit on the line. It wasn't on that line. Parallel and distinct. Now, you could have done it another way as well. You could have said... I'll set up these parametric equations and I'll check this point, right? One or the other, you just have to check one. Okay, so that's the first one. So this was parallel and distinct. Now let's move to checking whether lines are skewed or skew lines. So we have two lines, this one and this one here. And I want you to check to see if they're skew. So we're going to set up the parametric equations. Now, first of all, you take a look at the direction vectors and obviously they're not parallel. So they're either skew or one point of intersection. So let's do our due diligence here and write out all the parametric equations. You know, like when you're doing a test, if you're not sure what to do, at least do something that you know is right. Like write out, write these out. Maybe it'll spark something in your head about what to do with them once you've done that. But at least showing you, your teacher that you have some idea of what you're doing. Knew at least to write out the parametric equations. That might at least give you a mark or two. Okay, so there's my first parametric equations for the first line. So let's call this one L1. And this one L2. So this is L1 parametric L2. So x is equal to nice and easy 5 plus 3t. Um, y is equal to 0 minus s. So just minus s is good enough. And z is going to be equal to 1 plus 4t. Okay, so we have 
three three different parameters here with three three variables to solve for x y and z but only two parameters s and t and how come i change them to t's and silly teacher okay that would have been a little bit of a disaster they're all s's in this side okay so i'm going to pick two of them i'm going to pick the first two and i'm going to solve for s and t two equations two unknowns that's all i need to find s and t and once I've found S and T, then I'm going to plug that in to see if it works for the third equation. So let's do that. We're going to pick two and solve for S and T, then check your solution to see if it satisfies the third equation. Okay, so let's do the first two, just because they're right there. Two is equal to, um, sorry, two plus three T equals, get a little ahead of myself here. 2 plus 3t, 2 plus 3t equals 5 plus 3s. Okay, get everything to one side of the equation. So I'm going to say 3t minus 3s is equal to 3. Oh, well, look, we've got all these 3s. So that means that t minus s is equal to 1. Right? You can simplify that. The other equation I'm going to use is for y here. So I have minus 1 plus t equals minus s. So that means t plus s, t plus s is equal to um, positive 1. So now I'm going to write these two equations here. This is my equation 1, equation 2. So I'm going to put equation 2 right under here. So I have t plus s is equal to 1. And I get the choice of either adding or subtracting. Let's add them up. So that would give me two t's. These ones will be eliminated. 2t is equal to 2. So t is equal to 1. Okay, so I have t is 1. I need to find s. So when t equals 1, I'll put 1 in here. So I get 1 plus s is equal to 1, and s is equal to 1 minus 1, which is 0. So here's my two solutions for the variables s and t. So now that I know that t is 1 and s is 0, I'm going to plug them into the third equation to see if I get the same answer here. So I'm going to plug it in. So I have 4 minus 5 t is equal to 1 plus 4 s. So I'm just setting these two equations equal to each other like I did at the start for these two. And I'm just going to check left side and right side and if they're not the same then these are skew lines. Okay so left side equals 4 minus 5 times 1 that's minus 1 and the right side is going to be 1 plus 4 times 0, because my s was 0, and that gives me 1. Left side is not equal to right side. So if these lines had one point of intersection, then these would be the same. I would have got the same answer. So therefore, the lines are skew. They're skew lines. I don't know if you say... The lines are skewed. I think you say the lines are skewed, or you say they are skew lines. So one's an adjective and one's a verb, right? They are skewed. I kind of like saying that. They're skewed. Okay, so one more example here. Um, this one, uh, just, well, maybe I shouldn't give you a hint as to what's happening here. Let's check, see what's going to happen with these two lines. So I'm having, um, I'm going to write out their parametric equations first. So there's your, there's your one mark for doing almost nothing, right? Y equals 1 plus 0p. Z is equal to 1 minus p. And my other equations, so this is line 1, line 2. Let's go 3. X is equal to 3 plus 9q y is equal to minus 1 minus 2q, too cute, and z equals 1 minus 
Q. Okay, so now I'm going to set the X is equal to each other and the Y is equal to each other. Same thing I did up here. It doesn't matter which equations you pick, but generally, you know, just start at the top and work your way down. They're very easy. Like if, if some numbers were really much more difficult, then pick the easy ones first. But these are, these are all little baby numbers, right? 3 plus 9Q. So um, I've got 2 plus 4P equals 3. Blah, blah, blah. Now let's rearrange this equation. So I have 4P minus 9Q is equal to 1. And for my y's, I have 1 is equal to minus 1 minus 2q. And rearranging that, I'm going to get, oh, look, we got 1, 2. Um, 2q equals 2. 2q equals q, negative 2q. So q is equal to negative 1, right? Do the math here. You can do that. Plus 2, plus, or 2 on this side, minus 2, divide by minus 2, minus 1. So I get q equals minus 1. That was a very easy one to solve. And so I need to know what p is. So we didn't need to do two equations to unknowns because this one was such a simple equation. So if q is negative 1, what is p going to be? So I need an equation with p. So 4p minus 9 times minus 1 is equal to 1. So that's going to be positive 9, subtract 1, negative 8, 4p equals negative 8, and p is equal to negative 2. Okay, so, and finally, what I want to do now is I'm going to substitute my p's and q's into this equation here, or this, this set of equations, this set of equations, to see if I get the same point. Okay, so if p, p is equal to minus 2, then I would have 2 minus 8, so I get x equals minus 6, y equals, well, it's still going to be 1, and z, 1 minus minus 2 is 1 plus 2 is 3, and so I get minus 6, 1, 3 is the point of intersection. Now, you might say, well, do I have to check the other one? It's up to your teacher. I would say no if you, you know, you think you've done, but it's kind of a good thing to check, right? So I'm going to say Q equals minus 1. So X is equal to 3 plus 9 times minus 1. And I wrote 6 because my head's going faster than, um, so I get minus 6 again. And Y equals, so minus 1 for Q, that makes this plus 2, minus 1 plus 2 is 1, and z at minus 1, that's going to be 1 plus 2 is 3. So I get the same answers, minus 6, 1, 3, minus 6, 1, 3, and therefore minus 6, 1, 3 is the point of intersection. Okay, so I hope I haven't bored you too much, got this all straightened out, skewed or not. This one was skewed, this one wasn't. So there's an example of everything you should need to know for the intersections of lines in two and three space. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, give me some comments, give me some likes, tell me where you're from. It's nice to hear what parts of the world are watching my videos. Bye for now.